When a couple dreams of starting their family, they do not see years of disappointment and frustration as part of the process. When infertility is diagnosed, those struggling with it find themselves dealing with resignation, bitterness, anger, and exhaustion. Children are viewed as a source of pride, strength, and economic fortune for the family, a man's wealth and strength being equated to his offspring. In many communities, marriage is still regarded as being unsuccessful if there are no children to show for it. Infertility is a shame-filled, silent trial isolating couples in closed bedrooms of pain. Meanwhile, in many cultures, childless women suffer discrimination, stigma, and ostracism. Because of their inability to bear children, barren women are often disrespected, and most of them do not enjoy the same privileges and status as women with children. For men, the pain of infertility is difficult to talk about, and they resort to suffering in silent pain. Whilst putting up a bold front, men suffer from internal isolation, depression, and unspoken shame. The World Health Organization has defined barrenness as a disease of the reproduction system defined by the failure to achieve a clinical pregnancy after 12 months or more of regular unprotected sexual intercourse. The other definition classifies infertility as the inability of a sexually active, non-contracepting couple to achieve pregnancy in one year. The male partner can be evaluated for infertility or subfertility using a variety of clinical interventions and also from a laboratory evaluation of semen. Infertility is a brutal cycle that steps on hands gripping hope. The cycle begins each month with hope only to be followed by disappointment. My name is Mrs. Sequence Charamba. I got married in 2010 in October. In fact, that's when I waited, but I had been married in 2009. That was our customary marriage. It was really a wonderful feeling to be married to someone whom we have been dating for such a long time. So from 2010, we're just staying the two of us. But it was not an easy journey. In our culture, it's not acceptable to be married for even a year and not show any signs of being pregnant or any plans of conceiving. Myself, there are times when I would feel for my other half. Because you would tell whenever we do family gatherings, everyone, they'll be playing around with their kids. And I would look at my other half. To some extent, I started feeling pity for her because you can tell that she was feeling bad. So usually those gatherings, they started to become a source of frustration for us. After two years of not having a kid in our marriage. We started investigating why we were not conceiving because we had not tried to plan our family because we had none to plan. So I remember eventually we went to a number of gynas until we were referred to one of the best in the country, who's a specialist, who's referred to as the best in the country. And I remember for us to get an appointment, we had to wait maybe a number of months before an opening was granted to us. So we then went to see him and a number of investigations were done. All the results that we got from the doctors that we have been going, they were pointing to the fact that I had a condition called oligoteratospermia. It was really something confusing to the extent that uh, I was afraid to losing my wife. It was really a trying time in our relationship. I got uh, very depressed to think that as a man, there are things that you are unable to do. It's not a very good feeling. And also looking at your spouse, Thinking that uh, there's, there are some things that I'm failing to do for her, to me it was really a very bad feeling. To the extent that it affected my performance, work-wise, looking at other people at work, seeing them having fun, enjoying their families, to me it was 
really a bad feeling. And then also coming back home, you would find your wife. She would be happy to receive you as a husband coming back home. But at times you ask yourself now, what exactly am I working for if I cannot meet my wife's expectations? So it really affected me a great deal to the extent that even interacting with some members of my families, I'll be frightened. And also to think of maybe if I am to say anything, will my contribution be valid since I have been identified as a failure in this area? So it was really a bad feeling. So as a result of that, I made up my mind that I will no longer visit doctors because of the news that I had received. And also as a person, you will look at your situation to see if there was anything that would have changed in between. Nothing had changed. So I knew that if I was to visit the doctors again, they were going to tell me the same thing. And I would go through the entire cycle again. So I just decided to say, no, you know what? Let me just live the way I am and take each day as it comes. So as time goes by, we discussed with my wife, say, no, look, staying away from the doctors will not help us in any way. We really wanted to conceive. So I gave in, and then we decided to visit again another top specialist here in Zimbabwe. And I remember the final consultation that we went. It was around May 2012. And the truth of the matter is he sat us down and says, these are your results, and he explained them to us. But I remember, what I remember was the last thing that he said to us. He said, I know that it is not common among black people and it is against our African culture. But if you really want a child, you must consider adoption. Yes, you can try all other things, but the truth of the matter is you might just be throwing your money down the drain. I wouldn't advise you to take any of those routes. Yes, we can try what we can try, but the chances of you conceiving are very slim. You know, if it was, this guy was a specialist. This guy is a specialist. He's good at what he does. Him confirming and telling us that, I can't speak on behalf of my husband, but what I felt was down, being downtrodden. It was, um, you, you feel hopeless. You, I remember I cried. Um... He said, I would rather tell you the truth, the pain would subside, than try to give you false hope. But if I were you, I would think of adoption. Your case is very tricky, if not impossible, for you to conceive naturally. As men, you can put a brave face, but deep down inside it will be affecting you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, to be frank, I think that was rock bottom for me. It was like a death sentence. It was because you know how it is when, when you're growing up as a young girl, you always dream about being married in a white gown. I had achieved that and other things. But among the important things that you dream of is having your own child, caring your own child. Um, I mean, most of the peers that I had been playing with, people of my age had two, three children, but still we had no child even going to family functions and anything, people could always tell that there was a problem because we had no child. We then just decided to say, you know what? Let's just leave it. We'll see how it goes. Put it in God's hands. So from that time, we just decided to shift our focus and then do some other things in our lives. Since 2012, I did not seek any medication. It was so painful. And I felt sorry for my poor heart to say, I can't go back there to be told these things again. You always question your womanhood. You, you are not sure. You say, what have I done wrong? So definitely there were pressures from both families, my own family, because I had been married legally. My husband had tried to be a very good husband. He had paid everything. So they had pressures to say, what is he going to say? 
Why are you not doing this? Why are you not getting pregnant? Some people would be so insensitive sometimes to say, if you are planning it, then it's wrong. But guys, who plans not to conceive for almost five years? Even from my in-laws, my husband, I remember, tried to protect me from various things that were being said. But obviously, there's a moment in time that things would slip out and you'd get to hear of them. You spend so many sleepless nights crying and asking God, why do I deserve this? You think of moments when you, you made the choice. At times, you feel sorry for your own spouse to say, I wish I did not have to put him through this. I wish, just looking at him, you, you sometimes think, I wish we were in a better place. And God has been really fortunate to us. We, we were not struggling. We did not, there was nothing that we really desired because of the grace of God that we did not have, with the exception of that child. But any achievement that we did, that we got, was undermined by the fact that we did not have a child. People would also question to say, ah, okay, God is good, he gave you this and that, but you don't have a child. There was always that but. Somehow you can't help to feel sad for yourself, to say, but I thought, what's wrong with me? What have I done wrong? I tried to get married the proper way. I, even people you knew were mischievous at school were having children and some would even confide to say, I really didn't want this one, but they came as a mistake. And there you are thinking, what do I have to do to make sure that I always, I also can have my own child? You would hear people whispering to say, why, why would they build? Why, why would they buy this kind of a car? After all, it's a family car. What are they buying it for? They don't have a child. They should give us those monies and make use, better use of things. It was always painful. I don't want to lie. You understand that it's not their fault. People cannot hold their lives backwards for your sake. But you can't help feeling that I'm left out and it's not my choice. I didn't choose to be barren. I had passed the stage of crying to God. And it comes a stage where you are bitter, where you're asking God, what's, what's wrong? I tried to be as straightforward as I could be. But it's never in our own effort, I believe. Imagine the pain that Mr. and Mrs. Charamba had to endure as a couple. They had prayed and even sought medical intervention, but nothing had changed. But then, what did family or friends have to say? How did they intervene to help this seemingly hopeless situation? Did they have a solution for them? They were precious to say, can you seek African medicine? Can you seek other interventions to help you conceive and to conceive quickly. Following her desperation, Mrs. Charamba had to force herself through various medical processes in a bid to get pregnant, but it was all to no avail. Regardless of the pain and bitterness that had settled in, she still had hope. However, despair intensified month after month, was God hearing her cries and her pleas for his hand of mercy? Would God reach out to her and dry her tears? I would like to thank God for the prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa and Ruth Makandiwa because their teachings, they really sustained our marriage. Because we would find that if it wasn't for those teachings, Really, I don't know where I would be right now. Because at times there were a lot of thoughts that were coming through my mind. But because of those teachings, they gave me strength and they uplifted my faith. So we continued in our relationship. And to some extent, I think it also brought us closer together and strengthened our marriage. August 2015. We went for a service, minister's material. And then during that service, the man of God came to me specifically. I remember my husband was not there. He had been working. And then he spoke about silence in our house. What is your name? What's your name? Sequence Charamba. Okay. 
The Lord is asking me to ask you for your husband. Where is your husband? Okay. Hmm. You know what I'm hearing? Do you want to know what I'm hearing? Yes, sir. I'm hearing silence. Silence. I'm hearing silence. I'm at your place. I'm in your house, but there's quietness. Yes. At first I was confused. I had no idea what he was talking about. You know, it is sometimes when you are being prophesied to, your mind is blank. You don't know what he's talking about. But as he kept on prophesying to us, I realized that he was speaking about the issue of barrenness in our marriage. Hmm. You know what I'm hearing? Do you want to know what I'm hearing? Yes, sir. I'm hearing silence. Silence. I'm hearing silence. I'm at your place. I'm in your house, but there's quietness. Yes. 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 And I need to pray for you because something has to be corrected in your room. The scent of days as old as you are, as old as you are, you remain the same. Men of God, rightly as you say it. It's just the two of you. Prophesy, Papa. Thank you, Jesus. You will carry a baby. Because, because what I see, I don't see the I don't see a problem with the husband. I see a problem with you. Because now I will pray for you. And after praying for you, you will have to stop because I saw a very small tablet. Ah, there is no sequency in the way you flow. In the way that you flow, I'm talking about, yes, yes. I'm talking about your, your, your yes. moments. My periods are to a point where you have to take something yes. to avoid pain. I'm seeing a, I'm, I'm seeing a tablet. Hmm. With you, with you, it's not painful like pain, like you say to people, I'm feeling pain. You sit down. You roll on the floor. You move away from the bed. Now, now, if we can stop that, I'm seeing a baby. What really shocked me was that the man of God had never been to our place. We were not close to any pastors who knew our history very well. There was nothing for him to know except his God had spoken to him. I remember I started crying because it was a sensitive issue. It was something that we had tried everything that was there possible for us to conceive, but we did not have a child still. What I do is, when I come to you, because we are leaders, some, some of you, I will whisper to you, and what I will tell you is just a secret. But that which is for public consumption, I will say it so that when the baby is crying, people will know. As old as you are, as old as 
Oh, Jesus. Your child shall be called talent. You remain the same. As sent of days. As old as you are. As old as you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One of the most beautiful things I had have the honor, I have had the honor or the privilege or the favor to have witnessed is to, to be prophesied to, to have a prophetic word coming to you. It's a beautiful moment. For me, what is so beautiful in it is you, you know. Of course, we know that when we pray, God is listening and we're having one-on-one -on -one time. But for me, when God is telling me of things that no one else knows, if God is telling me of my future and is directed specifically to me, there's nothing as beautiful as that because you don't have any doubt to say at this particular moment, I am in the presence of God. He is addressing me as an individual. He's giving me a word. For me, it's beautiful. It's something that I've told myself I should never take for granted. So when I had an opportunity to review the minister's material on the Christ TV channel on YouTube, and when I saw it for the first time, it's like I was dreaming. The first thing that Prophet Makandiwa said to my wife was that the problem is not with your husband. What I see, I don't see the I don't see a problem with the husband. I see a problem with you. Because now I will pray for you. When I only saw that part. I really felt like a huge load was taken off my shoulders. The way that I was thinking, the way that I was perceiving things around me changed the moment I heard that. And I played it, I think, for more than five times. So the more I played it, the more I think my faith was being renewed. So I think it was more than five times that same day when I was trying to play it, understand exactly what it was saying, and also that promise to say a baby is coming. Mm -hmm. What I do is, when I come to you, because we are leaders, some, some of you, I will whisper to you, and what I will tell you is just a secret. Yes. But that which is for public consumption, I will say it so that when the baby is crying, people will know. Looking at the doctor's results, they had actually written us off to say it was impossible for us to have a child. But now hearing the man of God coming to us and telling us exactly the opposite of what the doctors were saying, really it was something that was mind blowing. If Prophet Emmanuel Makandia was to tell me that yes, you have got a condition that the doctors had told me, we will pray about it. To me, somehow, yes, I was going to receive that, but you'd find that being humans, you might have at the back of your mind to say, ah, this is obvious, the doctor saw it coming, you see. But Prophet Makandiwa told us exactly the opposite of what the doctors were saying, and my mind was just blown. It actually renewed my faith. It's like I was being born again in Christ. It was a new level of spirituality that I was witnessing. Of course, I have been a member of the church for some time, but seeing that happening to me, it really renewed me. My faith was uplifted. The prophetic is truly important. It gives hope. It gives you reason to smile, reason to want to face tomorrow, reason to to look forward to living another day. It gives you hope. For me, it has given hope in my marriage. It has given hope as an individual. It has given me a reaffirmation that God truly loves me. 
I mean, of course I understand. I don't know how to explain it. But the prophetic, getting a prophetic word is so beautiful. There are very few things, if any, that I can compare. Because I have convinced myself that at that particular moment in our time here on earth, you are in the presence of God. He's addressing you. Some of us have never really had... I'm not sure of any other thing to say. If I pray, of course, God hears me and everything. But that, according to my level, is a reaffirmation. It's something that I know that at that particular moment, it's just God, his prophet, and me. I am the topic of discussion between two great spiritual beings. I am in the presence of God. So yes, the prophetic is very, very important. It's very important. We, we would not have been here. Maybe my marriage would not have survived. Maybe I as a person would have backslidden a long time ago. Because, but you're given something to hold on to, which is the prophetic word. And if you have seen other people's prophecies coming to pass, you then know to say, it's just a matter of time. Mine also is coming to pass. And indeed, it is coming to pass. From that time onwards, we felt as if God actually was looking at the two of us at that moment in time. We were the only people that mattered to God at that moment in time. And we were really excited about that. All they had was a prophetic word. There was no pregnancy, but just a word from the friend of God, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. But would that prophetic word sustain their hope? Would they be able to endure the period of waiting for the prophetic word to be fulfilled? I remember after receiving the prophecy, you are so excited, you are so happy. But as reality starts sinking in, you go back home, you realize that your periods are still coming. There comes a time where you, you fail to understand or you... You sometimes question to say, does he really understand what we've been through? We had sought the best of med the best of medical interventions. We had tried everything that was possibly human, but still we had not conceived. Somehow, some funny thoughts will begin to creep in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to say, is this baby really going to come? You question. Sometimes you question the reality of it all. Sometimes you listen to the devil's whispers. It's in a moment of desperation. But I want to thank God. He is ever faithful. He gave us the prophets of God for a reason. And because though we had our doubts, we did not backslide, we did not do anything. Uh, the delay in the manifestation of the prophecy, somehow we attribute it to our behavior. Because I know what Prophet Makandua always says when he's giving prophecies, he would tell you that every prophecy has got a condition. And for us, the condition, it's something that we didn't took it off when it was said. We were so much excited, such so that we overlooked the condition. Because like I've said before, we used to quarrel a lot. Yes. And I remember attending most of the services at uh, City Sports, when the prophet of God, Prophet Makandiwa, was uh, ministering at one instance, he actually said that uh, when your prophecy is about to come, mm -hmm. usually there are a lot of things that happen. Like, for instance, you can quarrel to the extent that uh, that night you can sleep in different rooms or you can sleep in the same bed, but you don't even talk to each other. Mm -hmm. You don't even want to touch each other. So we used to have those instances a lot. Yes, we had our moments of serious strain where you might not voice your thoughts, but you would think, mm, maybe this guy, you know, maybe he's the one who's got the problem. You would resent someone even if they try to be nice to you. Yes, you can try one, once or twice. Those moments would come when you're thinking, oh, maybe you should just divorce me and get someone else. You would be happier. 
if someone tries to be nice to you, if there is something that you have done wrong and someone is trying to reprimand you, sometimes you would think he's just saying that because I don't have a child with him. Maybe if I gave him a child, he would not treat me like this. You couldn't separate issues to say, ah, maybe this is a separate issue that I should look at separately. Maybe if there was anything else, you would always find a way of leading it back there. If you haven't cried for a long time, but you feel like crying, you would just bring up a small issue and try to tie it towards that direction of barrenness. And then you'd have something to cry for. And uh, we used to discuss like the following morning to say, but what really happened? What caused those fights yesterday? And we couldn't really put our finger on where the problem was exactly until we decided to make a conscious decision to say, no, we really need to get along, mm -hmm. make an effort to understand and appreciate each other. I thank God he managed to sustain us because if it wasn't for him and the teachings of the prophet on marriage, I'm sure something like this, people would not survive it, maybe including us if you look at it, because it is a strain. Even our prophet Irene, what do you mean? 2015. Still, my doctors and I kept on coming. I'm saying it is possible. What are they saying now? We are expecting. I remember the day was the 18th of January. It was my birthday. And then my wife decided to take me for a surprise dinner that evening. So I came innocently coming for dinner, for my birthday. And then when we got to the place, she took out a pregnancy test kit and then she threw it to me to say, look. And then being a man, some of these things we are not conversant with them. I looked at it. Then I looked back at her. I could tell there was this excitement in her face. So I looked again at the kit. Then I looked at her. Then she said, you're having a baby. So I didn't know how to react. I just looked at her, emotionless. Then she was saying, no, we are having a baby, we're having a baby. I started crying. Surely God has remembered me. God has remembered us. And it was really a fulfilling feeling. I actually felt whole again. It was my birthday. I got this present of a lifetime. And when we ate the food there, it didn't actually matter. What mattered was the news that I was given. I actually became full, but I was only eating because we had paid for that. And then we discussed and agreed that, no, let's keep it a secret until the pregnancy is showing. But I couldn't do it. <laughs> I've got a sister who is in Dubai. I sent a message, I think, the week after. And then my parents visited us over the following weekend. I also shared with them the scans. I was really overjoyed and I couldn't contain it inside myself. So I really had to share it with someone. So everyone I got an opportunity to talk to, <laughs> I would tell them, we're expecting our baby is coming. And really, it was exciting. She would look at her when she is walking, taking a bath, doing everything. I would actually look at her and admire, see those changes that she was going through. Now I am eight months pregnant. It's a feeling that I can barely describe in words. If only I had known that God had these plans for me today, I would have been probably in a different space. We are so happy, I am so happy. It has even turned our marriage upside down with happiness. 
we are we are happy to say the short and long of it. This God is real, whatever he says. I don't know what else I can tell anyone in my situation to say. Believe and let God take control. He is real. I am expecting. I am eight months along now. It's one of the best moments that it's, it's when you hear your child kick, when you when you hear the movements inside, it's something you can't describe. It's something that is astounding. Still, my doctors, and I kept on coming. I'm saying it is possible. What are they saying now? We are expecting. You can imagine that the only other time that I went back to him is when we eventually conceived, when we said, let's go back. But I remember when eventually we went early this year to say we are suspecting that we are pregnant. I remember he looked at me and said, oh, eventually you tried one of these conventional methods. Was it IVF? Was it ICSI? What did you do? I looked at him and said, nothing. He looked at me and said, uh, okay, seriously, what did you do? And I told him, I got prayed for. He looked at me puzzled, as in prayed for, what do you mean? And I remember I laughed and said, prayed for, is in prayed for. And he says, by who? And I told him, Prophet Manuel Makandua and Prophet Luis Makandua had prayed for us to conceive. He looked at me and says, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's first confirm that indeed you're pregnant because these things, these illusions can happen. This is how bad our situation was. My own doctor could not believe that we could conceive naturally. He thought there was some sort of mental case or illusions. So he really wanted to confirm that I was indeed pregnant and it was indeed a proper pregnancy. I remember someone asked me to say, so when you heard your baby's first heartbeat, did you cry? The honest truth is I was overwhelmed, but no, I did not cry. Why? Because I was so worried about what the doctor's face was registering. He doubted our story. There was no way that we could have been pregnant, especially naturally. So his face was frowned when he was looking for that small heartbeat. He was, he did not give out any signs instead of what is this nonsense that I'm hearing that people can conceive through prayer when I, a specialist, could not help them. So as he did the scans, his face was irritated. He was, um, he was really not in the mood to, to tolerate these things, as they call them. These things is, for lack of any better words. So I remember, I know I did not cry. I did not even look at the screen to monitor the baby, no. I looked at the specialist's face. I was trying to see if he was giving out any signs. Then eventually, after you can imagine five or agonizing minutes, he says, oh, it's truly a pregnancy. Uh, okay, this is your baby. This is the heartbeat. You must be about eight or nine weeks pregnant. Congratulations. I sighed with relief. Though I was overwhelmed, though I was excited, for me, it was more of relief to say, oh, so eventually, yes, we are pregnant and it has been confirmed. And it was one of those moments you can't, you can't explain it to everyone. It's something that was long overdue for us, and the, the suspense was killing us. Of course, there were a number of people that we used to socialize with, families and friends, people that were in our circle, people we had gone with to school, people we just knew had worked with previously or knew in different circles of life. I remember one of my friends said when she saw me and I was already probably expecting a few months ago, and she says, ah, you, you never told me, did you eventually, 
what happened? Did you guys separate? Are you married elsewhere? Did he, you know, because people just thought that between the two of us, we we had no chance. Yes, maybe naturally we had no chance. But I thank God that he never wrote us off. He, he is the only one that could take us out of this predicament. And I want to thank God still because we are eight months pregnant. And yes, he came through for us. This is a fulfilling time. Seeing my wife carrying our child, we are enjoying it. Because usually when the baby kicks, it's really something. Because you find that uh, you have not seen it. You are believing. And if you sense any movements inside there, it's really a wonderful feeling. Say, so, wow, that's a baby inside there. And you can't wait for the baby to come. Finally, the Lord had done it for them. Tears of pain had been transformed into tears of joy. Their prayers had been answered and God had intervened. In the Bible, after Elizabeth had become pregnant with John, she praised God saying, The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown me his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. For Mrs. Chiramba, her disgrace had been turned into amazing grace. Just the ability to conceive was a miracle for them, and let alone reaching the final trimester of the pregnancy. This was amazing grace manifesting itself. But how would they prepare for their God-given miracle? Thank you for coming back. We are now in my final month, which is the nine month. So anytime from now, we should be expecting to hold our baby. Um, we're just trying to run around to finalize all the preparations. Um, the nursery, the clothes, everything, everything. We thank God for the protection as well. Um, it's been really, really an astounding experience. It's been something that I wish everyone who went through what I went through could also go through to have their own child, to carry their own child. It's something that is that is desirable. Um, since we conceived, we have had no complications or anything that is worth mentioning. Um, I want to thank God because once something is mentioned or once the prophetic is given about a situation, one thing that I'm confident about is... Um, God looks upon us, the covering that he gave his own prophets, the covering of the prophets was upon us, all and is upon us all this journey through. It's a breeze. I always used to complain to say whenever I go to the to the gyna, I barely spend any time because all he does is say, you're in perfect health, everything is okay, I have nothing else to check your BP, I've never had swollen feet, I've never had complications with my BP or diabetes or anything at all. So I really want to thank God that has sent us this far. Anytime from now, we're expecting to hold our bundle of joy. I can't wait personally. I can't wait. Mainly because it becomes, you can't wait to meet this person who's, uh, who's been kicking you, who's been, who's been responding to your voice, the fulfillment of the prophecy to its fullness. Um, I can't wait to meet this little person, mainly because you've been carrying the baby for almost a year and months. Um, they've been responding to whatever it is that you are. If you talk, they respond. And mainly because I can't wait to sleep on my tummy after nine whole months. <laughs> but I really want to thank God that has sent us this far. God had intervened through Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa, and the Charambas had immeasurable, inexplicable happiness that could never be equaled to anything in the world. Indeed, they were prepared to receive the gift that God had given them, and they had gone all out to prepare for the prophetic child. We have made the preparation, 
when they are waiting for the baby to come, I couldn't contain my excitement. To imagine, is this really me coming here to buy clothes for my baby? I almost bought the entire shop when I was doing my shopping, only to be told when I came back to say this is too much. You didn't have to buy all these things, but really, to me, it was not even enough. But I thought I was the only one having this excitement. If I also look at my wife, she actually designed a nursery for the baby. She's spending most of her time in that room, putting things in order, decorating it. You could tell that she's excited and really looking forward to the coming of the baby. As you can see right now, we are in, in the nursery. We thank God for the covering because, you know, African culture always says you can't start preparing for a child before you hold them. But we are so confident of our God and we thank him for his provision. Um, everything, almost everything now is ready. We are just waiting to, to, to have the baby. Um, we've tried to add a bit of detail a bit of fun, um, creative colors. I chose what I wanted, <laughs> lilac and pink, uh, because they say it's a little girl, yay. One thing I would like to thank God for, this is really a prophetic pregnancy. Because you will find that up to now, we have not experienced any complications. The BPs that we have heard of, the swelling of the legs that we have witnessed in some other people's pregnancies, we have not experienced any of that. Actually, she is actually getting prettier by the day. If you look at her skin, it has now become flawless. She is even lighter in complexion, becoming even more attractive by the day. <laughs> um, yes, almost everything is ready now. We are just waiting. And I, I can't wait. And let me confess that the labor is going to be a breeze because I'm my mother's daughter. It is a great joy for any woman that she can be called a co-creator of God. After having carried her baby in the womb for nine months, Mrs. Charamba was ready to meet her bundle of joy. Would she manage the experience of labor pain or it would just be a breeze as she had mentioned? Of course, people describe labor to you in different ways. People have different signs of labor. And being the first pregnancy, I had no idea. And you also know that during the first pregnancy, you always think that it's going to be more advanced when people, people are always telling you when it gets so, you will know. So I, I, I had a bit of backache. Uh, it was on a morning, I remember we woke up, we, we traveled actually. Not very far, we went to Norton. So I was trying to be very, very brave. But you knew that these things are coming. This kind of pain, I've never experienced it before. Um, so yes, we went through during the day. We were trying to explain to my husband, there's a bit of pain that I'm feeling. And being men, he panicked. And he says, no, 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 I will not stay with you here. No, will I stay with you in the car? So call the doctor, call your own doctor, find someone to ask what's happening. So yes, I thought I would be a bit more enduring, but we ended up having to call the doctor. We said, you oh, know, I think you are definitely in labor with the signs that you're explaining. So make your way to the hospital. During the labor period now, it was really interesting because I was curious to see how exactly it goes, what happens during labor. Um, I was happy finally to be in labor because as the days progress, as you get bigger, it becomes a bit uncomfortable, especially when it's hot. I'm sure mothers out there can, can relate. They know what I'm talking about. Um, so yes, I was a bit excited, a bit nervous. Uh, I don't think I was fearful because I knew I had the baking and the covering of the prophets of God, Prophet Imano and Truth Makandiwa. So yes, it happened. We went to the hospital. Um, I got there. Standing up was a bit of a problem because the pain now is intensifying. 
So we get there, the nurses check us, they say, ah, oh, definitely you're in labor, please come through. The sisters, they were actually surprised. Say, ah, why did you take so long to come? The labor started long back. You should have known. Then you were surprised. You told them, no, this is our first child. We didn't know how it, uh, it all starts. So we went into labor. She was saying she's a very strong person. She would never cry in labor like what other women do. <laughs> but uh, it turned out otherwise. So when you got the initial yes, she was being brave, putting on a brave face. But when the time really came now, uh, she did cry. I actually started feeling bad for her midway through. Labor is labor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure those of you who've been through it can relate. I don't know how to explain it. I remember I always used to tell people my pain tolerance is very high. I will not be doing these things, you know. You know, there are a lot of things, but it's interesting. Labor is definitely interesting. Yes, it was interesting in that regard to say labor is labor. There's a bit of pain that goes on, but yes, I would do it again. <laughs> so when the doctor came through... I remember he came, I looked at the clock, um, 9.37. I want to thank God. I, I, I don't know how to put it across. I remember specifically the nurses telling me that if you are the first pregnancy, we can't call your doctor now because um, chances are you are still an hour or two hours to go. That was around 9 o'clock, thereabout, in the morning. And I remember telling her specifically, please call the doctor because I don't think you will have the luxury and the time. Somehow you know what I'd seen in church when the babies are commanded to come. Uh, they come there and then. There's no M1. There's no to say it's para one, para five. No, 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 no. The spirituality and the levels of anointing that we operate under, they do not regard those things per se. So I remember I actually told the nurse, the midwife who was there to say, please call the doctor. You will not have time. And she said, no, you've got about an hour to go before you attend. And I remember the next time, maybe after 10, 15 minutes after she had checked me, she was panicking to say, can you quickly call the doctor? Somehow, through the grace of the God of Prophet Emmanuel Makandeo and the covering that we operate under, um, when they called the doctor, the doctor was saying, I'm actually downstairs, I'm getting up, I'm coming upstairs. Something told me to come through because, you know, this pregnancy, we've been waiting for it for so long. I remember looking at the clock, there's a clock that they put in. Looking at the clock, it was exactly 9.37 when my doctor walked in. And you can't imagine, by exactly 9.42 thereabout, I had a baby. He looked at me and he says, I only pushed, I think once or twice, twice. And the second time I delivered, and the baby cried there and then. To me, it was actually horror that I was seeing, because there are a lot of things that I have never seen before that I was seeing there. But then I saw the baby, it came out, then it started crying. I also had some mixed emotions now, to be happy, or to cry, or to laugh. And I also didn't know where exactly to go to be with my wife or to jump to the baby. I was now torn in between. The best that I could do was just to stand, holding my hands, looking at the baby, looking at my wife, looking at the baby. If there was any person who was observing, you could tell that I had actually frozen. I was now clueless. What exactly can I do? So the doctor now told me to say, no, just move to the side a bit. We will prepare the baby and give the baby to you. That's when I then decided to go and be with my wife, ask her if she was fine and everything and so forth. And she confirmed she was okay. Um, I'm trying to explain how, let me try to explain how it feels. Of course, there's a bit of pain then, there's a lot of pressure that is going on, changes in your body. But as soon as you deliver, for me, it was overwhelming. Meeting the little person who used to kick you, you mean... You used to talk to your baby, and now you, you meet the baby. I remember thinking, God, where was this little being all along? You knew where we were coming. You knew where we were going. Your grace. I remember 
there were tears. People thought I was in pain, but for me, it was overwhelming to think, is this me? Is this us? Is this me having this child? And it's true what they say, as soon as you deliver, everything else is forgotten. But I could not afford to forget where I had come from and what the journey was. So when the baby was delivered, it took a bit of time for them to come to us. And I remember asking the doctor about four times, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Why is she crying so much? Why are you guys, you know? Um, and then later I understood that the midwives had been told that, please do not deliver this baby. I want to deliver the baby and I want to be the first to check. Obviously, I don't blame the doctor given our history. He just wanted to make sure that everything was okay. So I remember the doctor looking at the fingers, probably doing the tests, the eyes, everything, wanting to find out if everything indeed was okay, if there were no complications, if the baby was indeed in good health. And yeah, we thank God of Prophet Emmanuel Makandewa. The baby was perfect. The baby was big. The baby was 3.1 kgs. She was fine. She was doing everything that they expected to do. I remember they handed over the baby to the father first, and he was overwhelmed. He just took the baby and came to us and said, we need to thank God. Look at what God has given us. When it was given to me for the first time, and that feeling is something. Yes. You can say a lot of things to say, I oh, know I've been with a baby, babies, they don't matter, kids and so forth. But when you go to that stage, when you actually hold your own baby in your hands, I really can't describe that, that experience. It's really something. I really, yeah, it got me places. I felt fulfilled. That long wait that we had, it was really worthwhile. And I really thank God for that. There is something that happens when the miracle actually happens and you are holding the miracle and it's there, it's tangible. There's a certain level of gratitude. There's a certain level of um, humbling, um, the humbling presence of God to say, we didn't deserve anything. I remember thinking to myself even, yes, we have a prophet, but remember the prophet can also exercise his own judgment. He, do, he did not have to pray for us. He didn't even have to prophesy to us. He could have chosen to give someone else their own word. But for me, I was so grateful and my family and my husband to say, in that particular day, when the prophet of God came through and gave us a word. Oh, Jesus. Your child shall be called talent. You remain the same. As sent of days. As old as you are. As old as you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's humbling. I also want to thank God and to thank the prophets of God, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa and Prophet Ruth Makandiwa, to say they came through and gave us a word. They didn't really didn't have to. There's nothing really special or outstanding about us. We are, we, are, we are just congregates. We are just people who go to church. But they gave us a word and they believed God and they even prayed and had faith on our behalf to say the God that they knew, the God who had done it for them, was also able to do it for us. Thank you so much. We are grateful. By a prophet, the Charambas were delivered until they conceived and also delivered. Indeed, talent was brought forth just as the men of God had prophesied. But how did it feel seeing and holding their beautiful child and knowing that this was no longer a dream, but reality unfolding? and seeing the baby for the first time. I always used to try to relate to what the prophet of God used to see. Remember, trying to imagine what my baby would look like. I would find comfort knowing that the prophet of God had already seen the child, even through trials or if something went wrong. I was comforted knowing that the prophet of God had already seen this child. For me, it was reconciling the two. When the prophet of God said, I am seeing your baby, 
and us together with my husband seeing our baby it was the fulfillment and overwhelming feeling the fulfillment of the prophecy it was no longer just a word that was hanging in the air but the word had become life so for us it was astounding it was awesome it you stand in awe i can only speak for myself but i'm sure the father also felt the same to say you're overwhelmed with emotions of love you uh, you can never imagine that you can love anything or anyone with such pure love such is the power of a prophetic word when it is planted in the heavens by prophet emmanuel makandiwa a man who carries power and authority that is backed by heavenly hosts if you look at the prophecy it used for me if someone is looking at it you would think that the prophets of god had they were done with us they had given us a word of prophecy they had given us a child but after a few minutes of prophesying to someone else he comes back to fulfill even the prophecy that he had started with us to say the name of your child shall be talent after speaking about girl children you girls in your family watch out for what i'm saying now Wherever you find yourself in eventually you rise up the ladder. Yes. Because I see lights. I see lights. Oh Jesus. Your child shall be called talent. You remember the same. as and of this oh jesus as old as you are as old as you are thank you jesus thank you jesus, thank you, jesus. they'd even given us the sex of the baby to say this baby will be a girl and indeed we were blessed by this perfect little girl who is perfect in every way and it's overwhelming even the level of depth even the accuracy of the prophecies to say you, you know might not understand yes, not because silence. the prophets of god have not given it to you I'm hearing but silence. everything I'm that we also ever desired we answered in that quietness. in that prophecy in that prophecy and i need to pray for you because something has to be corrected in your life you gave us everything concerning this so this so this you are with you married name to say my charamba mabunzo my talent in our vernacular language which is something that you look at and you wonder this little person is also calling us parents we are, we are we are even our relationship we are at a stage where you can't afford to to fight about petty things you are you are more you understand the other person better because you've got a common cause now you've got this little person that god has entrusted you in and you can imagine being a little girl and the fathers and daughters it has already started to show in our house babati you 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 when he comes from work all he wants to do is to find out how the baby is doing um asera say in our vernacular language how she has been you can imagine even now since he came back we can oh she's slipping and instead of putting her down she's being held all over the place so we really want to thank god this is the definition of god's tangible love for us perfect in every sense um you can't imagine anything so pure anything else that can be so perfect we we, we definitely thank god for this gift a visible manifestation of god's tangible love indeed The baby has brought forth joy unspeakable to the family. Talent is a testimony of undeniable grace and a constant reminder of the power invested in the mouth of prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Now now that the baby is crying, the people know that the prophecy has been fulfilled. Talent is here. <laughs> We really would like to thank the God of Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa and Prophetess Ruth Makandiwa for giving us the prophecy and for being used mightily by God to fulfill our prophecy. We really want to thank them. Friend. 
Today the Charambas have peace, joy, and fulfillment knowing that God is faithful and truthful and he is not a man that he should lie. Their experience of parenthood can only be explained in their own words. I remember my husband is into IT. And back then, before we had we had our little precious gift, he used to spend long hours at times, especially months with systems and everything at work. But now we see him even any other day, five o'clock, six o'clock, he's already here. The first thing he asks, not even, how are you? What, is, what was your day like? All he asks is, where's the baby? Can I hold her if she's sleeping? Sometimes he wakes her up and says, ah, no, I need to see how she's been doing. So I really don't quite understand how he's feeling himself. Maybe he can explain it in his own words. <laughs> uh, I'm very much overjoyed with this precious gift. She's actually my princess. <laughs> she has uh, redefined love into our marriage. Yeah, with the coming of this uh, little princess, I think communication between us, it has improved so much. Mm -hmm. We used to fight a lot, mm -hmm. to be frank, yes. But with the coming of our princess, we are now measuring the words that we actually say to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if she says something that offends me, I no longer take offense for the sake of our little princess. Even the thoughts of negativity, the negative energy, we are trying by all means to make sure that we don't bring it in her environment, to make sure that she's always good and cute, <laughs> good looking like that. Yes. The experience that I went through, it has really taught me a lot and now I think I'm in a position to also share with people maybe who might be going through what I was going through before. You find that uh, when you don't have a baby in your, in your union, it is something that is difficult. And I go to an extent to believe that uh, it's not natural for a union like that, not to have a blessing of a baby. There are really some forces that are at play. So during that period now, that's when couples need to be united and focus on God. Don't lose faith. You don't need to lose hope. Because most of the things that will be happening during that uh, time, there are things that are meant to take your attention away from God. But you just need now to be resolute, to be strong, and to always focus on God. And you find that there are also people who can say a lot of things, either family, friends, or even at work. But as long as you have got your focus on God and keep in mind that our God is a covenant-keeping God, He is a God who commanded us to be fruitful and to multiply that promise will one day come to fruition. We just need to stay prayerful, be committed to each other, and respect each other. There is no situation whereby you can say, because I know in our tradition, when you don't have a child in your union, the blame mostly is apportioned to the wife. And really it's something that is bad. I am fortunate that in our instance, it never happened like that. But now I can come here and tell you that uh, it's not always the case to say it's the wife who has got a problem. Look at it in my scenario. It was me who was diagnosed by these doctors to say I'm the one who had a problem. But she didn't go away. She stood by me. She supported me. She actually really gave me strength in most of the things that I was doing. But also when the, now the true prophets of God came and then they told us what exactly the challenge was, it was also now my turn to show her support, to encourage her, and also not to make her feel inadequate. 
So to some extent, those are some of the things that helped us to be strong and to see the coming to fruition of the prophecy. Do you want to know what I'm hearing? Yes, sir. I'm hearing silence. Silence. I'm hearing silence. I'm at your place. I'm in your house, but there's quietness. Yes. Yes. And I need to pray for you because something has to be corrected in your room. The scent of days as old as you are, as old as you are. What I do is, when I come to you, because we are leaders, some, some of you, I will whisper to you, and what I will tell you is just a secret. Yes. But that which is for public consumption, I will say it so that when the baby is crying, people will know. <laughs> that which is for public consumption, I will say it so that when the baby is crying, people will know. We are really grateful. We want to say thank you to uh, Prophet Emmanuel Makandio and Prophetess Ruth Makandio. Thank you for allowing God to use in such a mighty way. Musai tida isuchete asine vamu vashinji vabato umfaro akadai. You have managed to preserve our marriage, and for that we are forever grateful. May your God be the only God that can be worshipped. Thank you so much. Sometimes words fail us. We can. We can only say thank you, but from the bottom of our hearts, we are grateful. Thank you so much. Our generation has been truly honored by God himself by being given a man after God's heart in our dispensation, a man who is a friend of God. Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa does not just open his mouth in vain. When he releases a word, he activates the supernatural as he calls the things that are not into existence. Consider the boldness and authority that he carried as he delivered the prophetic word and even going further to give the baby girl a name. Such authority is only exhibited by a man who knows that he is backed by the heavens, a man who walks with God. Today, the Charambas resound with praise to Jesus, the King of Kings, for doing a great and mighty work in their lives. To God be the glory.